the Federal Economic Development District for these five counties, and um, it's the timing is kind of um, uh, good right now because I mean, as far as uh, economic development strategies, we're developing our next five-year strategic plan with the with the counties and the communities in Region Seven E here. Um, uh, we have to do a, a, a redo on the plan every five years to be qualified for uh, to be an economic development district, and a lot of that is kind of a data dump of the current employment uh, um, and population demographic information of the region. But then there's also um, you know some strategies that emerge from the meetings we have with our locals and, and with our strategy committee, and and um, also the. Um, uh, we usually in that document have a, a, a list of projects that have more of a regional significant impact. Um, but one of the one of the things that we're doing uh, currently is uh, we're doing some planning with uh, through a, uh, a grant through the Blandon Foundation uh, to uh, what we call the CVAC region, which that that's a whole other story. How that was. Uh, coined, but um, that's kind of the northern uh, section of our region 70, which is you know kind of the broad brush across. The, um, it would be Mille Lacs, Kanavik, and I think, um, Pine counties along that top rim there, where it's very rural, um, and, but there's a real gap in in uh, connectivity up there. And there was uh, some uh, initiatives. I think uh, Kanavik County, uh, I know. Had a pretty aggressive application to deed last uh, year. Do you know if they resubmitted that this year? Well, I think they, they'd like to. They were they were kind of concerned. I know about where that. <coughs> they did not. They, did not no. they, they would like to. But well, their okay. problem is the same problem we have in yeah. Pine County. Yeah, yeah. The providers are just not interested in talking yeah. to us, and the dollar value of the grants that uh, are available, you almost have to have a provider at the table to use it as as matched. So you kind of do it as a match. Yeah. You know? We're, uh, well, you've got the same map we have. The whole county is, 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 except for the corporate limits and around a couple of the lakes, it's pretty yeah, much underserved. That's the amount of people want. That's Pine and Canabic, I think. Yeah. If you're in the corporate limits of Pine City or Hinkley or, or the immediate outskirts, you have credible connectivity. It's certainly not um, gigabit or anywhere close to it, but it's, it's usable. If you're much beyond that, then in some cases you really have nothing. Um, and it's an issue, before I came to this job, Representative, I was president of the Technical College here at Pine Tech. Uh, and Brian Shaleen, when he was with the district, and I have been working on this issue for about 17 years now. Um, yeah. And we're, we're, we're yeah, drew, drove us both gray and retired. Um, uh, for, yeah, well, we should talk, that would be interesting, interesting to talk to him. I don't want to lose that in terms of what the, how the needs that the college has, too. Okay. okay. But go ahead, yeah. But from an economic development perspective, um, it's difficult to attract, say, advanced technology companies to an area where the connectivity is not what they want. Um, and then the whole rollout of um, working from home, um, telecommuting is an issue if you're not in the corporate limits. And even if you're in corporate limits, if you're doing a lot of large file sharing, it's not, not a happy situation. Uh, and then the whole ed the education impact you've heard about uh, the kids at Pine City High School, the kids at, um, at Pine Tech and Hinkley and wherever. If they're very far outside the city limits, um, they're in, in a little bit of a pinch in just doing their homework and accessing their the curriculum. Yeah, you're seeing that here as well. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. What, let's uh, so is this broadband part of kind of what you're hearing well, from people? Well, as far as as, as uh, Robert had mentioned. Uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely there's there's gaps in our region and, and in our industrial um, development. Um, it's it's been a, a barrier over over the years too, um, from a number of angles. But we're hoping, um, um, you know, as a federal economic development district too, that um, we can kind of start to change their thinking a little bit about what it, what constitutes infrastructure too, because you know, they're over the years they've made huge investments in sewer and water. Um, and curb and gutter and things like that, but uh, broadband is has always been kind of a a new area, and I think they're beginning. The EDA, the federal EDA, is starting to change their thinking a little bit on some of that. They are. Yeah. yeah. Um, City of Sandstone, and we are in the process. Hopefully, in the last two weeks, of getting final approval on a federal EDA to open up a business park. Our first tender is going to be a hospital, 
a hospital cannot expand and have a future without high-speed, high speed, big, and there was a company in, in Ventus that came through and basically just put fiber between the and the Twin Cities. And so the, our project wouldn't happen if that wasn't available, but part of the federal EDA requirements is we have to say that we were going to provide that to a portion of the business park that we're providing. That was one of their requirements. Um, so whether you're ready for it or not, if you're going to go after federal money, you have to include that. And that's part of how the thinking has to change is, like you were saying, Bob, people don't think of broadband as part of basic infrastructure. I live three miles south of Sandstone. I get my, I get my internet um, to the telephone company. It's not dial-up, it's the next step up. But it, it costs me more than dial-up. But I'm at two. You know, you, you, know, the, you, know, you want, a, you want a, you know, five or something like that. I'm, I'm at two, and I'm only three miles out. We're also looking at building a library. So we got this inventus backbone that's through here. The library is served by their own fiber, okay? And one of the buildings we're looking at is served by old ECNEC fiber, which is the school district. But you can't use that for a library, you can't use that for building, but the fiber is there to a building. And so... Why can't you use it? Because it's theirs. Oh, it's an ownership issue. People yes, don't right. okay. okay. Um, so you got a building that's got good fiber to it, but because it's not the right kind of use, you can't use that because it's dedicated for, for example, for educational. So um, that that is another that is another issue that these entities don't share. That's that, well, that's interesting. Um, and then you said something about um, that the providers aren't interested in partnering. So can you talk a little bit more about? That, what is that? Is there <coughs> the phone, telephone companies? Our, our service provider for phone service in the area is uh, CenturyLink. Used to be Quest. Yeah. Um, and for cable, it's um, Midcontinent. And they've both done, uh, well, uh, CenturyLink, when it was still Quest, approved the CO here in Pine City and, and a couple of other communities so they could deploy DSL, which has a geographic limit mm -hmm. in terms of range. Um, the cable company, um, back when it was U.S. Cable, before it came to the Mid-Continent, got the contract to serve the 14 school districts in this area. They're, they're all connected by uh, a gigabit network. The, the buildings themselves have great connectivity, and they share a lot in terms of instruction over ITV. Right. Um, but when the first iteration of the border to border broadband grants or it was issued, we went to both of them uh, and asked them, uh, and I had a couple of meetings each with them about uh, partnering, thus being the, um, we have a fiber out product backbone in Pine City, and we'll have a board that oversees it. Uh, we wanted to partner with them to extend their reach beyond the end of their current service area, more out into the rural areas, and sort of uh, go at it incrementally, adding chunk by chunk out into the, uh, out into the rural areas. Um, and we got uh, a kind of initial expression of interest from CenturyLink, and then they disappeared, and we couldn't get them to return a call. Uh, and I, as best I recall, Mid-Continent, Brian, wasn't really interested to start with. Not in the, oh, originally? Yeah. Yeah, they weren't at all. And, and really, he talked about 17 years. Most of our efforts over that time have not been, uh, the reason they haven't been as fruitful as we we spend most of our efforts trying to convince providers that We'd help them, we'd do whatever. We just want the connectivity. And, and the answer we always get from them is, except for the small ones that last for a couple of years and are gone, but the big ones, their answer is always, not in our business plan. You know, we don't care if you give us all this stuff. We're just not going to do it. It's not in our business plan.